We've seen a lot of long travel 29 inch sleds debut in today's market. It's created a bit of an arms race for who's gonna be the longest and the slackest. And now some bikes have gone too far. So where was Santa Cruz gonna land? This bike feels like it is right in the heat of battle. They kind of came in, they did a slack head angle, 65 degree in the high setting, 64.7 in the low setting, 76.3 seat tube angle in the mm -hmm. low setting, 76.6 in the mm -hmm. high setting. I mean, those are current numbers and it's a huge wheelbase, mm -hmm. 1240 or something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. This is a big bike. But it's not a vague feeling big bike. I mean, the, the way they did the, the leverage curve on this. I mean, Santa Cruz are always slightly progressive. I mean, you can, especially these lower link ones, you can put coil shocks on them. In fact, the coil shock is an option all the way down to like the second level up C model build. So you can really get something rowdy without having to go up to the to the 10 grand level. But it has this, this really perfect amount of mid-stroke support. Totally, and we often talk about hover bikes. Climbing this bike, it feels like it's just the right amount of mid-stroke. It's not as though you're wallowing in anything. It's supportive, but it's still tracking over everything, and you do get that sensation that you're sort of floating atop things as you're climbing up stuff. I mean, there's the Nomad of the Bronson, and they have this really nice flat progressive leverage curve, and that pairs really well with the 29-inch wheels when it comes to pedaling up rough stuff. And to me, this felt a lot different than the Hightower LT, which we tested at Marquette Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, where you really get that sensation, people talk about the on-off nature of DPP. You press the pedals, you feel like that opposing linkage is kind of turning off any shock movement. Mm -hmm. Here, you still really get that nice sensitivity while having a nice firm pedal stroke. It's a nice balance that does feel different mm -hmm. from the LT. And that bike is sticking around for now, which I was a little surprised by. I mean, especially after having, having ridden both of them, Personally, I would take this in a heartbeat, but it is, it's a long, big, committed to the long travel 29 field bike. The Hightower LT kind of got its one foot in the mid travel, one foot in the long travel. Totally, and to speak to that, this is uh, a much longer reach bike. We were on mm -hmm. an XL, it had a 490 reach. Mm -hmm. While I remember that Hightower LT, that's a much more modest reach measurement, and mm -hmm. overall it's a shorter wheelbase, it's a easier to maneuver bike much more on the all mountain trail side of the spectrum while this is that big bike they can get you through some really rough stuff it's also cool to see a double extra large size in the lineup and it's double xl it's like 515 mil reach i think and i mean the, you can over fork this bike if you want you can put a 170 fork on it and that's just a piece of the versatility and the setup on this bike we talked about the coil rear shock there's the flip chips that they do uh, on the Nomad and the Bronson, um, but they also did flip chips in the in the rear end. You can go from a 435 to a 445 uh, chainstay length. Which can help you with, if you're over forking a bike, it becomes less and less weighted. And mm -hmm. by pulling your, your rear axle even farther back, it's naturally pushing some of that body weight toward that fork. So with a bigger fork, you can still mm -hmm. have it ride a little bit more centered. Yeah, and it pairs well with just the the rowdy straight lining through rough stuff kind of advantages of a long rear end. Totally, you want this to be your downhill bike? Takes, you know, a little bit longer chainstay and mm -hmm. a big burly fork and you're on your way there. With a coil rear shock, it's, it's not that far off. Low and long, high and short, over forked or not, each of the Mega Towers configurations makes its own sort of sense. So it's easier than you'd think to get along with, no matter your preference. That sort of gives this bike a pretty broad footprint among, along the, the spectrum of, of long travel 29ers. And that overlaps with a few bikes. I think one of the more popular ones is the Yeti SB150. But the Mega Tower feels more, more balanced. I mean, and not just based on the numbers, but based on the, 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 the broad applications of it. Um, I, I felt more centered on this bike. It didn't feel quite as, as downhill only oriented. The Yeti is a bike that encourages you to really be over the front end. Whereas this one out of the box is 
a little more all around version of the Burley Long Travel 29. Which is interesting. I rode this bike on really tight, twisty little trails up in Marin County. So I rode it in the higher setting. Took a little bit of getting used to to deal with this longer wheelbase, but I did notice that for such a big bike, it's not actually that hard to maneuver it. It takes a little bit of getting used to as anything different does, but you can put it where you want it. And though it's ridiculously capable, it's not unwieldy. I mean, another bike that I think also further along the DH spectrum than this bike is the Pivot Firebird 29. Like a, a bike with a little bit more travel and I think a little more, I guess I'll just have to say gushy feeling than, than yeah, this bike. Yeah, it sops it up and it has that totally softening effect over those successive hits. Mm -hmm. But this feels like you can pop it around more. It's a little more playful. You have that more noticeable mid-stroke support to it. Mm -hmm. Well, if it sits a little deeper. Mm -hmm. So this has a little bit more lively feel while still maintaining so much capability. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's really interesting, especially on chattery rough stuff, this is one of the most quiet mm -hmm. bikes I have ever, ever, ever ridden. It's mm -hmm. like, is this even a full suspension? Is there mm -hmm. even a chain on this bike? Mm -hmm. Nothing is clanging around regardless of how fast you go through really rocky stuff. And it gives it this really nice, solid feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, part of it is noise, part of it is the actual feel of the bike. It feels robust without feeling too harsh. And also, if you ride it in that high position, I got in it and I'm like, I, I could do this for another four or five hours. It just had that really in it for the long haul kind of a feeling. Yeah, it's a really comfortable, composed feeling. It's not like this is gonna be your marathon bike, you know? Um, mm -hmm. You're gonna have to work for it if you're going on a long haul ride. Mm -hmm. But I noticed like you, it's an awesome riding position. It just feels natural and mm -hmm. it feels comfortable and it feels like you can cover ground on it even though it's a huge bike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I still ended up in the low position. Just suited me a little better. Um, but it's not a big jump in numbers. I mean, it's really small. Mm -hmm. You're looking at 0.3 of a degree. That's yeah. very slight. Mm -hmm. But it does give it a little bit different feel as you noticed. Yeah, I do feel like in the low setting, the initial feel of that shock is a little bit softer. So you either may want to add a little bit of pressure to it or some volume spacers. But to me, it was worth it. I think it suited what this bike is, is meant for in, in that low setting. So is it a Nomad 29? What is it? <laughs> I'm still, I'm, Personally, I'm still gonna call it a Bronson 29 because I felt like I could put it where I wanted it to go more easily than a Nomad 29. In a highly competitive field of long travel 29ers that seem only interested in one-upping each other's numbers, Santa Cruz quietly brings in a contender every bit as capable on gnarly terrain, but markedly more all around, without losing the bravado to go big. We've never seen a bike with such untethered capability also be so rideable.